I'm here today with Boone Sim, who is the president of the Americas of Tomasic, a $180 billion investment company. And Boone, I cannot thank you enough for taking the time to sit down with me today. Really, really appreciate it. The way I start all interviews is really analyzing or learning about where somebody grew up. And you didn't come from this country. I'd love to hear what it was like growing up in Singapore. Uh, I was born in Singapore and I spent uh, about 25 years in Singapore. Um, it was an interesting time. Uh, it was, um, you know, a period of growth, extraordinary growth in Singapore. Uh, we saw a lot of changes. Uh, in fact, I, I, if I recall in my childhood, I saw riots on the streets. Uh, for most people who think about modern Singapore today, you know, highly efficient. Everything is modern. Everything works. Uh, about, about 50 years ago when, uh, you know, Singapore actually uh, became independent from the British um, you know, that was not the same place. The life lessons I learned was, you know, just being in a much more entrepreneurial environment. Right. I mean, it's an incredible city. It's absolutely gorgeous. And, and I actually saw an interview that you did sometime back, at a, or you gave a speech, um, and it was, uh, you showed pictures of Singapore in 1962, I believe, or 65, correct, correct. versus where it is today. How did Singapore evolve and grow so quickly? Transformation is possible within a generation. Right, so, so and, and uh, modern day miracles like Singapore is, is possible because when you look around the world, places like Korea, Taiwan, right, so, and if you look at, you know, what's common among, among these countries that has managed to, you know, make the transformation, make the leap, sure. uh, I would say has been, uh, you know, good corporate governance yeah, okay. uh, and leadership that, um, you know, leadership at a national level that put uh, the country's interests above their self-interest. Um, and I, I, I would say that generally that's the case in life, right? Whether it's the government, whether it's companies, whether it's, you know, uh, startups, you know, prop for profit or non-profit companies, you find that uh, when, when a group of people have um, ambitions that goes beyond themselves, mm -hmm. then they can create extraordinary results. You grew up in Singapore, you went to college in Singapore, and what inspired you to come to the United States? So I would say that if you grew up in Singapore, you grew up, um, you know, in, in back then an emerging uh, country, right, like Singapore. Uh, the dream of every kid is to go to, the, to America, mm -hmm. frankly. To, to, it's an exciting country. It's a country full of innovation. Uh, it's a country full of opportunity. Got you. And you started out with an engineering background, and then you found your way over to Credit Suisse, where right. you worked for, uh, I guess, about 20 years uh, doing investment banking. How did that transition occur? You know, at, at that time, I was fortunate enough, um, the predecessor firm of Credit Suisse, First Boston Corporation, mm -hmm. Um, and, and back in 1991, I started, I did a summer internship with, with First Boston, and they were looking for, to build a technology group, mm -hmm. right? They were looking for people with a technology background like myself, um, because back then the technology industry was a, quite a small industry, right. um, and understanding technology and the implication for technology for companies and whatnot uh, was critical for that business. So what, attract, what attracted me to First Boston was uh, the opportunity to do something I like doing, mm -hmm. right, is to deal with technology companies uh, or innovative companies. Um, and, um, and, you know, so which is how I started my career. So you, you, you got into the technology space. What were some of the companies that you uh, work with? Well, um, when I joined the firm full time in 1992, Google didn't, didn't exist. Mm -hmm. Right? There was no Facebook, there was no Google, there was no Amazon. Cisco was a micro-cap company. Wow. Okay? So everyone just started. Um, so I would cover companies like, you know, when, when, when you know, in the 90s, uh, people like IBM will cover companies like IBM, will cover companies like Texas Instruments, uh, some of the more notable names, some of the larger companies. Um, when I left, uh, you know, Credit Suisse, uh, 20 years later, I will be calling on companies like Alibaba, mm -hmm. right? And, and obviously, the world has changed quite dramatically in, a, in that 20 year span. Sure. What has it been like for you to make the change, to go from investment banking to 
your homeland. First of all, I, I enjoyed doing my 20 years at First Boston Credit Suisse. Mm -hmm. I loved the job. I woke up every morning dying to get to my office. Uh, and the reason why I made that decision uh, was because I wanted another career. I wanted another 10 to 15 years of runway mm -hmm. uh, to create something for Tomasek, right, in the Americas. And, um, and so that was one uh, big driver of a decision that I made. Uh, I would say that the opportunity at Tomasek is incredible. Uh, it's an incredible firm. The firm has such a broad mandate mm -hmm. that only my creativity would limit what I could do, mm -hmm. right? And, and so I'm, I'm, I'm more excited than ever than when I first joined Tomasek. I would say that Tomasek is into um, direct investments, mm -hmm. both for public and private companies, um, and both in controlled transactions and minority positions. Okay. Um, we just want to find good companies that we can invest in for the longer term. Um, so, so we're unique in that sense that we're not a PE firm, which, you know, the PE firms just do only controlled transactions generally. We're not a hedge fund in the sense the hedge funds only do public, you know, minority positions. Uh, we do both, right? We do both public and private. So, so our, our investments actually do span, you know, the spectrum. Of, of structures. When you're hiring people, uh, you've done a lot of hiring throughout the years, what do, what do you look for? There's a few things we look for right, when we look through uh, candidates. One, we look for people who has high integrity. Um, that's, that's number one on our list, right? Uh, two, we look for people who have a track record of accomplishment, whether it's in non-for-profit or for-profit, it doesn't really matter. Um, we, we look for people for that track record, in meaning that they, are, they were tenacious, they stayed with it, mm -hmm. right? So that's something that's important to us. And then thirdly, we look for people who are intellectually curious, uh, people who never, who have never stopped learning, who are always asking, what's the next, you know, gee, how does this work? Uh, help me understand this, uh, because, because that's what drives our business. Okay, Boone, last question. You're back in Singapore at your alma mater and you're giving the commencement speech. What sort of advice would you give kids these days? I would tell kids to keep an open mind, right? If you think about my career, you know, where I've lived, what I've done, um, you know, when I grew up uh, in Singapore, I never envisioned that I'll be doing this, you know, call it 50 years from now, mm -hmm. right? Um, I would say keep a, uh, have a sense of adventure, uh, try something new, take a risk, um, you know, never, never talk yourselves out of adventure, adventurous situations. Um, and, uh, and it's a big world out there, um, and, um, and, and be, be an explorer. Got you. Again, I'm here with Boone Sim, who is the president of the Americas for Tomasek. Uh, Boone, cannot thank you enough. Really appreciate your taking the time to uh, sit down with me today, and I wish you continued success. Thank you, Skitty.